Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And this is a paid request for Tony. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics or tier lists or reviews or whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And he wanted me to do a tier list on Arnold Schwarzenegger films. Now, I don't make these lists. The other people do, and they send me the link. I really appreciate it. And he wants me to rank these Arnold films from S to E. I'll just say F for failure and fucking awful. So, I do like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was more of a Stallone, Van Damme fan, but I do like Arnold. I do like quite a few of his movies. And the best, easiest way for me to do it is to work on the S tier first. Like, what would be in the S tier? And um, Easily Predator would be on the S tier. It's my favorite Arnold film. Combination of action and horror. Love the concept. Love the Predator design by Stan Winston. A great cast. Carl Weathers, Bill Duke, Sonny Landham, Jesse Ventura. Fantastic score by Alan Silvestri. <laughs> Absolute 80s classic. My favorite. Also S tier, I would put The Running Man. My favorite movie dealing with a future where there's a game involved and you put into the game and you either live or die. There's been a few movies like that, 100 Games among others. I think The Running Man did the best. I don't care about the Richard Bapa and Slash Stephen Teen story. Not a fan of it. I've read bits and pieces, wasn't for me. Uh, I think Arnold's on his A game. I love the one liners. Follow me, lap bulb. Hey, Christmas tree. Here's Sub Zero, now I'm playing Zero. You better leave enough room for my fist, or we'll jab it to your stomach and break your goddamn spine. <laughs> Richard Dawson is the villain. Perfect. He's a game show host in real life. Game show host here. He was glee in his villainy. Love the villains, the stalkers. They definitely had a Dodoya flavor to them. Sub Zero, Fireball, Dynamo. Great score. Wonderful supporting cast. You had Yafakoto, uh, Maria Conchita Alonso. Uh, Arnold's a badass in it. I love the Running Man. Let's see. Guy put Commando on the list as well. Put the knife in me. Again, Arnold being a badass, taking names and kicking ass, and kicking names and taking ass. He just does everything in between in that movie. Uh, I like Rambo 2 more, but Commando's a lot of fun. It's entertaining. It's, it has a couple issues of technical problems. Like at the end, you know, people get flipped. You just see the flippers at the end. When Arnold pushes over the car that's tipped over, when he drives away, the car then looks perfectly fine on that side. When five seconds before, it was all fucked up. So there's some screw-ups, but once they engrave one-liners, don't disturb my foot, it's dead tired. I eat green braids for breakfast. I'm really hungry. You have the fun action set pieces, the mall set setting, the whole finale. Yeah, really enjoyable movie. Yeah, ja, what's his name? Vernon Wells as the villain. And Dan Hedaya. A lot of fun. And people would be like, what? But End of Days. Always loved End of Days. I think it's a criminally underrated film. I think it's Arnold's most underrated film. I saw it in the theater. Had a fantastic time in it. I love the com I'm a sucker for combo of action and horror. And... Arnold gets to tip the devil's ass and go, you're a fucking choir boy to be a choir boy. I mean, come on. He gets to be in the subway. Hands coming through, like, <laughs> which reminded me of Resident Evil 2, the original from PlayStation 1, with a grenade launcher, shooting grenade launchers into the devil and blowing them up and shooting devil cult members. Or taking possessed old women and throwing them face first in the glass and glass gets in the person's throat. And the villain, I mean, Gabriel Burns having a lot of fun as the devil. 
definitely one of my favorite portrayals of the devil. Nice shirt. And then he gets the kid hit and killed and run over. Still like the shirt. I mean the what's her name? I forget her name. Eh, she was there, you know. Yeah, I do like seeing Rod Steiger in it. Some decent gore. A guy gets the devil punches someone through the head, among other stuff. Peter Himes directed that. Always thought he was a vastly underrated director. I love End of Days. It was Arnold did the show with a little bit more drama. Like when he has to relive the death of his family and his, the anguish in it. Love End of Days was a nice change of pace and it did not deserve the bomb as it did. And then Total Recall S tier. You got the three titties. You got the pole for Hoven Ultra Violence. See you at the party with the you got Michael Ryan's side and Ronnie Katz's villains. You got some nice practical effects on the mutants. You got Benny. I got five kids to feed. Hey Benny, screw you. <laughs> I know I'm saying just random lines, but if you've seen it, you've seen it. If you don't, check it out. Fuck the remake. I know at least those are S tier. Because that's in my top five. And let's see. I'm sure there may be more in there, but let me think. Let's go the opposite. E as in eat me, eat my ass. I'll say the E. I'll say it's for eat my ass. Which movie would eat my ass? Let's see. Let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, Sabotage and eat my ass. Fucking garbage movie. Garbage fucking film. Uh, don't care for the storyline. Uh, unlikable characters. So when they were dying off one by one, I'm like, good. Dialogue that must be written by Rob fucking Zombie. Uh, yeah, that was such a lame duck fuck of a movie. Didn't care about the action scenes. They like said the characters must been from a Rob Zombie movie. Uh, Thought the ending was rather lame. Not a fan of that movie. Um, I don't know if this has all of Arnold's films on it. I didn't. For people go, well, this missing this movie. I didn't make the list. See, I don't think Dark Fate's on here, but that would be on this list. Uh, Genesis. Definitely one of the worst. You know. Sarah Connor that looks like she's 12 years old. Let's just say that John Connor doesn't matter because he's just taken over and now he's a villain and apparently that didn't matter because they're still able to defeat and fight the enemy and all that shit so shows how meaningless John Connor was. And... Hmm. Dosh at CGI, pissing on the original first two films by saying they're wiped out. You're part of a deleted timeline. That was a line. This is also the movie where Arnold, as a Terminator, he's been arrested and he's taking a mud shot and he smiles while the song Bad Boys, What You're Gonna Do, from the, which you hear on the Tops TV show, which aired back in the day, this fucking abysmal. Fucking abysmal. I don't remember where I put some of these on, the Stallone one, so if you're wondering why there's a difference, it's because I forgot. Because they could go either way. Like, it's D plan. I'll put on D. I can't remember if Stallone ever put on C or D. It goes back and forth, but it's D plan. Very disappointing. Very disappointing film. You got Stallone and Schwarzenegger in the same film. And really no memorable action set pieces or even lines of dialogue other than bang uh, it's not on the bottom of the barrel because Arnold has a couple fun bits in it that he's trying to have fun with the role 
the idea could be interesting. They're both in this state-of-the-art prison. Stallone is a guy that knows how to break out of prisons. So now he's been put into a prison that is even tougher for him to break out of. But better director, better script. Arnold, it takes a while for Arnold to even get into the film. And like more back and forth between the two and... More action set pieces with the two would have been nice. Better action set pieces as well. Hmm. Spinless 3 is definitely here. The bottom. Incredibly disappointing movie. Very disappointing. PG-13, the new cast. Don't give a fuck about Ronda Rousey. Don't give a fuck about her mole. Don't give a fuck about the guy that knows how to claim and go have CGI parachutes. Don't give a fuck about the guy that purposely gets his ass kicked to make some money. Don't give a fuck about any of the new guard. Dolph Lundgren is given even less to do than the first two Expendable films. Uh, even more watered down action scenes because of PG-13. Why is is given bullshit lines like, I was in jail for tax evasion or Gina Lean, Gina Lean or whatever the hell you were telling it. Dina Lean, sub by Dina Lean. Where the fuck? Fuck the Spinnables 3. Uh, Killing Gunther. That's definitely up there. I'll put... I'll put it to... When, when I do this by way, it's like... This is the worst. Less worse. Less worse. Less worse. Because at least this... It's Spinnables 3. There's a few moments I could smirk with Harrison Ford. Among other cast members. Uh... This one is the worst just for how much of a shit fest it put on the Terminator palette. But Killing Gunther is abysmal. It's a comedy that's not funny. It's a parody that's not witty or clever. And Arnold's just embarrassing himself in that movie. Like Spinnables 2, I think I put on C on the Stallone tier list. It's cool to see Van Damme and Chuck Norris. It's cool to see Arnold, Bruce, and Sly in the same frame shooting bad guys. On the, flip side, on the flip side, you got Dolph Lundgren talking about eating well ass. You got even... You could fix the CGI problem in the first film, but instead it felt like they doubled down on it. The new recruits like uh, Liam Hensworth and the Asian lady didn't give a rat's ass about. I think the Stallone Van Damme fight could have been a lot better. I think the Scott Atkins Jesse Statham fight could have been a lot better. So, very uh, disappointing movie. This one I haven't seen. Uh, was it the villain? I haven't seen this film. So I just put it here just because I haven't seen it. Terminator 3. I'll put it on C. The, these others are worse, but... Nick Stahl does a capable job as John Connor. It does have some cool action set pieces. The big machine at the end firing on the, the compound inner workings. And Arnold gets the big gun and <laughs> shooting at it. The, the highway chase sequence has some pretty decent stunt work. A lot of it's practical, aside from... Uh, it's a good chunk of it's practical, so it's a, it's a nicely made action sequence. I just don't think the film needed to be made. It goes against the first two, especially the second one, where no phase what we make. And then Terminator 2 is like, psych, yes it is. So... Yeah, I've never been a fan of Terminator 3. Oh, God. Okay, okay, what do we... Uh... Red Heat. I'll put it A. It's not quite in some of my favorite films of all time. But I do like it. I think it's a good buddy cop film. I think Arnold and Belushi work well together. I think there's some good fun lines of dialogue. He told you to go kiss your buzz behind and then Belushi gets pissed at the guy. Entertaining bus chase sequence <laughs> Belushi doesn't really have anything to do in the finale so, because it's more about Arnold and this other guy going toe to toe I 
and I don't really have much other problems with it. But I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it. But uh, I do like when Arnold gets the the guy's fake laid. Go gain him. I think it was a Peter Boyle as the police captain, which was fun to see. It's an entertaining buddy cop movie. Oh, just something about it doesn't make me put on S tier. I can't put my finger on it, but I still like the film. Uh, Batman and Robin and Junior. My God, where the hell do I put them? put them here. Batman and Robin, you can watch it maybe to laugh at it. So it won't make me as angry as this bottom stuff. But it's a piss poor movie. I mean, bad credit cards, bad nipples, Arnold's horrible ice puns, Uma Thurman going completely over the top. It's it's a abysmal movie. You maybe you didn't enjoy it because you didn't enjoy the set design and the costume some of the costume work, but it's it's a bad movie. Junior, where the hell would I put Junior? I'll put it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put that there and this I'll put here. Not too good of a movie. I mean, it's Arnold getting pregnant, which is a dumb idea. I still remember enjoying some of the chemistry between Arnold and Danny DeVito. And was it Emma Thompson? I do remember enjoying her character and some of her reactions. Kind of a as much as I liked Evolution, what they tried to do with Julianne Moore, where she was like the twutsy girl and you know, comedic, I thought Emma Thompson, I thought she did that better in Junior. Evolution is a much better movie, but I'm just saying that type of character. But it's just the concept alone, it just... I mean, there's movies I like that have silly concepts, Mannequin, Weekend of Burnings, but this one was just... No one wanted to see that. Let's see. Harker's in New York. Easily bottom of the barrel. Maybe you can laugh at Arnold's. The same old things. The same old places. It's Arnold's worst performance. Because he didn't have a great handle on the English language. And it's just a abysmally boring movie. I mean, maybe you need to chuckle at Arnold fighting a bear. As Hercules, but for fuck's sake. If I want to see that, I'll see Lou Ferrando's Hercules. Uh, Terminator 2. Uh, nah, I'm just kidding. A. I'll put it at A. It is a still a very well crafted movie in terms of action sequences, in terms of Brad Fidel's score, in terms of the acting, in terms of. The Linda Hamilton and the way she got so much buffer and tougher in her performance. Uh, Arnold did a good job. Edward Furlong did a good job. Robert Patrick definitely made an impression as T-1000. The T-1000 effects are still great to look at in today's age. I just think it's a little tad overrated in the fact of I do think it's a good film. I just never thought it was the best film of all time. It's not my favorite Arnold film. These films I do enjoy for different reasons. And it was also the start of The Terminator being toned down. I did it for the plot because it's Edward Furlong trying to teach a Terminator a bit more of being human. So you just can't go around killing people. 
by the Tobinator. It works for the plot it's telling. It's just personal preference. I prefer the original. Speaking of which, S tier on the original. It does have some wanty effects like the eyeball when you taste out for the mirror and you can tell it's a you know, not Arnold. But the horror tone, Brad Fidel's score is fantastic. The horror slasher feel to it, Arnold being so menacing and just hardcore in that movie. Michael Bean, Linda Hamilton do a great job, has a nice love story to it. Gotta put the Terminator up there. Where'd Sonny Arnold put his B? I don't hate it. I don't love it. I can have some fun with it. I enjoy Arnold in it. I even enjoy the Ernie Reyes Jr. and uh, oh, what's his name? He played Bluto in the Robin Williams Popeye movie. And Brigitte Wilson. No, not Brigitte Wilson. Brigitte Nielsen? Not Wilson. That's a different actress. Brigitte Nielsen, I can. She's not good, but I can enjoy her despite her hiccups in acting. I do see that she's trying, it's just she's not quite there yet. But I do have some dumb fun with the movie. Kinder and Cop. Uh, put that. Put that in A. Always enjoy the film. Dartuma. Ha 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 ha. Quiet. Uh, Arnold as Kimball worked well with the kids. Uh, sometimes it seems like the tone was a bit weird because there's some, for the type of film, some decently violent scenes. Like Arnold being shot once or twice at the finale. But then you also have some you know, goofy humor with the kids. But it was still fun to see. I think Ivan Reitman did a good job handling Arnold in that movie and how to handle his brand of comedy and let's put twins on there as well I'll put twins there twins is a fun movie Arnold and Danny DeVito worked so well together and Arnold just gave a very different performance this is this very lovable guy who's already optimistic and smiling it's a different turn for Arnold which was refreshing to see and show that he could do more than just action And do you know the way? It's actually my favorite comedy of his. I get a lot of fun and chuckles out of it. The finale you know, has some iffy effects as Turbo Man. He's going all kilter like this and that. And like, you know. It was fine, but it's not like my favorite bit. But And you know, I'm not big on the kid, Jake Lloyd. I thought he was a terrible in Phantom Menace. He's terrible in this movie. But... I love Arnold's character, doing the best he can for his kid. I love the banter he has with Sinbad. There's a lot of moments that made me, you know, two minutes? Keep got away for two minutes? So, he got to, he got to, uh, put the cookie down now. And it's great to see the late, great Phil Hartman in there. And also, as a guy who has worked in retail, I can relate to a lot of this, but the way retail businesses are during that, Christmas time, so that's a fun one. Hmm, around the world in the 80s, that's with Jackie Chan. Um, I put in the, the C tier. I remember not being a much of a fan of it. I don't like the film. I would say C downward are films I don't like, but it's not like rage filled. Meaning, uh, like I say, it just never made me that upset or angry, but at the same time, I thought it was kind of lame. Because Jackie Chan, but you know, you get a lot of you know, special effects put in there, which, I mean, Jackie is a special effect. I don't think it was a Jack, what was the other, Steve Coogan? I'm not sure if him and Jackie really had the best chemistry with each other. 
I mean, it was cool to see... I think there's a bit with him and Samuel Hunt in the movie. And then there's another bit with him and Arnold sharing the screen. And the idea seems... It just, you know... Kind of like watered down, Disney-fy type of movie that... I think didn't showcase Jackie Chan's talents as well as it could have. Even though he's a star, it felt like they tried to have Steve Putin do more... In terms of a character, and it just... I don't know. It is what... It, he is what he is as an actor. I just, I'm not, I don't know. Remember not being that big on it. Six Sins are going to put a B. I liked it. I don't love it. There's other sci-fi films I like more. Total Recall. Terminator 2. I would even put above The Sixth Day. But I do like the film. I, I do think that... The clone idea can work well within this movie has a fun line when you clone yourself so you go fuck yourself some nice supporting cast members you got actually I think you got Terry Crews before they worked together on the Expendables films I think Terry Crews is in it uh, I think like Michael Rooker uh, Tony Goldwyn Michael Rappaport so pretty good supporting cast some decent set pieces, but nothing that really make it grandiose or fantastic. It's watered. I th I think it's PG thirteen. I could be wrong. I, I remember feeling. I remember it feeling a bit watered down, which was, you know, not as exciting compared to the other sci-fi ventures he did, like Total Recall and such. And the way the Arnolds kind of talk to each other, they're like, cool. Really enough, like when Arnold was acting with himself, it was like the weaker part of Arnold's acting in the movie, but the rest of it, he actually does a good job. But I remember doing, you know, a decent film. Uh, Maggie, that's a zombie one. Same with Aftermath. They kind of fall in the same category. Not the bottom of the barrel, but just very boring. I get Arnold trying to do something different. I can commend that. But these projects... Maggie... It's it's filmed in which it miles, it's just pretty much gray scale. It's a gray look to the whole proceeding. I just wasn't a big fan of the movie. It just didn't do much for me. Sorry, I just wasn't a fan. Didn't much care for it at all. Same with Aftermath. Uh, I remember that being like a slow build and then not much of a payoff, at least to me. I could have been Arnold's acting, doing the best he can, but I don't know. Just, I thought the story was just very boring and very forgettable. Stay Hungry, I don't remember that well, so... Just put it here, just I don't want to make it fit better. Uh, True Lies, definitely S tier. Love True Lies, awesome. To me, James Cameron's last great movie really is. Just love last, uh, True Lies. Fantastic set pieces, the whole bit with the jet sequence is fantastic. When you look at compared to today's age, there's some fun comedy with him dealing with Jamie Lee Curtis and Tom Arnold. Bill Paxton is a lot of fun in it. It's like Arnold's version of James Bond and did a very capable job with that movie. Conan the Barbarian. This will actually be the most controversial one. I'll put it as B. I liked the film, but I never loved it like other people did. I liked the film. Basil Polidor's a store. James Earl Jones. Arnold is fine. But for the most part, I just didn't find it that exciting of a movie. Like, it's got some cool moments. 
But like, I didn't give a shit about the whole bit with him and the female witch and her going apeshit crazy and the effects don't hold up the best and, you know, the whole bit where he's close to being dying and these weird shadow people thing try to take him and, I don't know, just, the whole bit just looked wonky to me. Um, actually... I'll say I actually like this film more, Conan the Destroyer. I just felt more of the adventure fun in the Destroyer. The 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 group that he's with, you can see more of Mako, the wizard, you got Will Chamberlain, you got his partner, the thief. I forget the the actor's name. He was in Batman eighty nine, he was in Drive from nineteen ninety seven. He played the cook in City Slickers. I'd rather be fighting the bad guys, enough talk, and throwing knives in the people. I'd rather be battling the wizard in the Crystal Palace. and I mean, it gets me excited just him breaking mirrors with the music. Because I think the score in that is fantastic as well. And there's still some blood when he finds this big monster and he's tearing the damn horn off. <laughs> I just remember watching that a lot more as a kid, be more almost like a little bit of gauntlet with a group of people, just without the gauntlet, but you know, playing that for Nintendo. So I always liked Conan Destroyer. Uh Last Action Hero. Hmm. Hmm. Where would I put Last Action Hero? That's a good question. Hmm. Austin O'Brien. It's not the greatest, although he's better than Jake Lloyd. I do find it a very creative movie, though. And has a lot of good, fun bits to it. I won't put it... Nah, I'll put it here. Always enjoyed that film. Never thought it was as bad as people made it out to be. I think it's a lot more clever and witty than people think it is. Um... I could relate to the kid wanting to be in an action movie like Last Action Hero. Like I said, I think it has a lot more going for it than people give credit to. I don't think it deserved the, the bad rap that it did. I mean, that whole scene alone with the Hamlet version, Arnold's version of Hamlet is classic alone. The last stand I do enjoy, and I would put it. Uh, hmm. I'll put it somewhere around there. Just because it's underrated, it came out, it bombed. I think it's the last damn good Arnold movie. It was good to see Johnny Knoxville and Forrest Whitaker in there. I thought Arnold played to his age. He was getting more slower, he'd get more easy to get hurt. And I think that worked well for the character. But he still had those great Arnold moments, like when he has this big fucking machine gun at the end. I'm the sheriff. Yeah, I mean, a bit much of the, the bad guy driving his car, but he's trying to do this build-up for when he eventually does get into town. But overall, that's a film I would like to re-watch again, actually, sometimes, so. Fun movie. I still think it's a fun movie. I still think it's a fun film. Eraser is close to S tier, but I'll put it A tier only because there is some dodgy CGI that hurts it. You know, the plane on fire when Arnold has to jump out. The the CGI alligator, your luggage. But those are like nitpicks. Other than that, Eraser is a lot of fun. Uh, I love the big rail cannons he gets at the end of the film. It's great to see James Caan. 
I even didn't mind, was it Vanessa Williams? I forget her name. Uh, that's what... You could almost say that was kind of the last classic old school Arnold movie in terms of the one-liners and just the fun action escapism tone. I mean, once while I had some dodgy CGI showing up because that was the time when that was become more apparent in movies, but other than that, fun time at the movies. Uh, collateral damage I actually do quite enjoy, and I'm going to put that there. Always enjoyed. Never thought it was bad. I know some people don't like it because it's not a lot of action. I thought it worked well as the thriller aspect in terms of, I think that's a film, unlike these two at the bottom, Maddie and Aftermath, that's a film that had more of Arnold's acting, but the film I didn't think was nearly as boring as these two. I could feel bad and understand Arnold's plight when his wife and kid get killed, and I can understand his obsession, and granted it seems a bit too easy for him to get there. It was still nice to have people like Elias Corteus from the Ninja Turtles and John Leguizamo and, and others in there. Uh, Arnold being a firefighter has some nice moments, especially when he throws that fire axe at the end. That's a very satisfying moment. Uh, I mean, yes, it's not a lot of wall wall action, but it kept the story kept me engaged and interested. You want collateral? I'll do you fucking collateral damage, huh? You don't talk about my family like that. And you know, if I felt satisfied when the villains got their come up as at the end, and I still remember that feeling when I saw this. So I didn't get to see it in theaters. I saw it on DVD, but on DVD only. Wow, this is well filmed. It's from uh, the director of Under Siege. The guy knows how to handle these type of movies. You know the budgets on screen. I remember being surprised at the end for one part of the reveal. Spoilers. Uh, I didn't know that the girl would be the bad guy. I thought, okay, they're going to try to chase this bad guy, but I didn't know that the girl was a bad guy. And in fact, she was willing to risk the life of her kid, and Arnold's reaction was like mine, like, oh shit. Maybe smarter people figured that out earlier, I didn't, and... I'm like, oh shit, I thought that was a nice twist. And, uh, gave Arnold more to do, and some good escapism fun. Again, some dodgy CGI in the end, with the fire coming at Arnold and him diving out of the way. It's, though that effect doesn't work the best. But the, those that pitch is why I don't put it on S tier, but I still overall like it. And Raw Deal... Um, I gotta put it over here, man. Never been a fan of Raw Deal. Has a good finale when he's firing and shooting bad guys. But that five minute scene, I could just watch that five minute scene on YouTube. That five minute scene alone is why it's not lower. But the rest of it, I don't care about the story. I don't care about Arnold's character. I don't care about his one liners. Never drink or bait. I think that's a shitty line, in my opinion. I barely remember the bad guys. I always thought this was like one of the more forgettable Arnold films. I know a lot of people love this film. Teach their own. I, I find it forgettable. So, yes, my favorites would be Predator, The Running Man, Commando, End of Days, Total Recall, True Lies, and uh, Terminator, actually. Because I think I did a top ten. I think it was, the, it was... Terminator was not involved in the top ten, but I'm like, you know what? The more I think about it... And, we watched that recently, and when you compare it to the later Terminator films, it's such refreshing when you rewatch that of just how dark and horror film vibe it is. And uh, that Brad Fidel score alone, man. So, there's the, the list. I know it's not all of them. Dark Fate would be the bottom here. It's it's a good chunk of his stuff, but like Dark Fate would be at the bottom here. If you wonder, Terminator Dark Fate would be here. 
because I would say that's probably the worst Arnold film I've seen is Terminator Dark Fate. I would say Killing Gunther, but the Terminator films, the way they disrespected the franchise makes me more mad the more I think about it. Because then one time I say Killing Gunther was the worst, but I'm like, well, it's its own stupid thing, whatever. These later Terminator films just took a shit on the franchise, and that makes me more pissed. So... Trying to think what other films there would be. I mean, I guess Ted Lee's in the first Expendables, but as a cameo. So I would probably put that in this A region. Because I still, despite some issues, I, I still quite like the first Expendables movie. But yeah, there you go. Era then Eraser was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Eraser, yeah, that sounds like my top ten. From Predator to Collateral Damage, that sounds like my top ten. And see, I don't hate Terminator 2. I put it on the A because it deserves it. You don't want to be controversial? Uh, yeah, I'm controversial. I'll put Conan the Barbarian as B. I still like the film, I just don't love it like the others. So there you go. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.